Okay, tell me about this art uh, project that's going on on campus. So we have a scholarship, a bursary scheme for creatives, people in the creative industries, and it, it, it's very cool because that means that people who've made a contribution to art and to the country, who've never had a chance to educate themselves um, in business, can do that. And we gave one of them, um, as either the Johnny Clegg scholarship, a scholarship or the Music Industry Scholarship, to a fantastic woman called Maria Paula McGurk, who's an artist and runs an installation company called the Color Cube. And so we were, we just got this whole of this courtyard together, four buildings, it's got this lovely long view, Cape Dutch architecture. And we thought, well, how can we um, make that more interesting? And we had loads of people giving us ideas, and it's covered it in ivy and trees. And I said, no, no, no that we, we, we believe in creativity as the engine, the driving engine for South African growth. And that's how we're going to diversify the economy, creative business people, business people with creative acumen, creators with business acumen. So I said, right, Mary Paula, give us a proposal. What can we do with this courtyard? So she very cleverly um, went out to the artists she knows, the, the sort of urban artists, the new emerging, you know, that, that, that whole vibe in Joburg that's so mm. dynamic. And uh, did a bursary and said, look, who wants to win some money and um, put in your, your designs for this competition to decorate this um, whole courtyard area? And she picked, I think, about six of the artists uh, were the finalists, and each of them painted two columns. I think there's 13 columns either side of, of this uh, courtyard, and I'm sure you'll see it in a minute. Yeah. And they came, and uh, sometimes with their kids, and, and the whole place was turned into a sort of bohemian art moment for a few days. And they painted these columns, and I, w I didn't know how people would react. But the thing was that everybody so far has loved it. And I'm asking in my own mind, why do people like academia and this whole business school vibe mixed with so much art and with, with this alternative? Doesn't it make it too informal, too flippant? And not at all. It, what it did it was bring that sort of vibrant campus feel to it, you know, the place where people argue, where they're, they're brandishing banners and believing in, in this philosophy and that philosophy and this artist and this school, that whole beautiful educative dialogue and uh, and that's brought that feel into this campus and, and now we have a an identity a home that people are really comfortable with and that everyone from every part of South Africa and beyond can feel it's part of their identity and not some austere business schools identity so I'm very happy with what's happened but everyone I think authentically has said they really like it part of thinking well in business is to be imaginative, to be visionary, to put unconnected pieces together. It's not about staying the same and staying with all, all that training. As the world moves so fast, we've got to see emerging things that aren't patterned in our mind, that are going to create new, new patterns. For that we need imagination and creativity, not in some sort of um, weird, you know, way. It's just that imagination, uh, creativity, innovation, are the drivers of economic growth and the way we respond to fast change in the, in the environment. So I think it, I think it has changed the tone so people feel legitimized in coming up with their less formal approaches to things. Because I think people come to work almost in a suit. They go, yeah. this, this is all of me I can show at work. Mm -hmm. But at work now, we need to show a lot more of ourselves, the, the stuff that we kind of hold down. It's more random, it's harder to control, but it's great when it's inspired because now you're going to get self-moving groups, you're going to get small, fast changes, lots of experiments, and that's the way that uh, scale-ups happen. So if you want to fast scale up a business, it's not with a big master plan, it's often with a small team of very motivated people who are doing rapid, fast experiments. And I think this, this legitimizes that sort of mm. approach away from the old decaying dinosaur view of management which is a big master plan and we all work in harmony towards it it just doesn't work you've got to have fast adaptation work in beta mode but be very aware of what's going on around you've got to see the changes that are happening early you've got to synthesize interpret them say what does it mean okay what should we do now and uh, and try and try a lot of experiments and catch your and you know experiments that don't work kill them quickly, experiments to do work, amplify them quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I'm doing my MBA here, I'm on a bursary at Henley and John asked me if I have some ideas for their courtyard, they've just fixed their courtyard, they're expanding um, and my company tries to find ways of showing the value that the creative sector can add to 
the rest of society. There's a lot of stuff we do in the creative sector that not many people know about. So this project was an open call, 80 artists applied, well, just over 80 artists applied and we chose top 13. And they had to interpret the word resurgence. And the idea was to have a visual representation of what diversity is. So if you artists do that naturally, so we gave them the theme, they could interpret it in any way they want. Henley had no say on the outcome. I, I, I didn't even ask for their approval before the artist painted. And each artist has interpreted how they see that word and what that word means to them. And Henley has an example of that now on their pillars. So happy? I'm very happy. So in the MBA, when students are learning about the idea that there is no right answer to any question, they now have a visual representation of that. Are the artists happy? The artists are thrilled. They're hoping to do an exhibition at Henley. They're hoping to that people love their works and support them. Their names are on the pillars. Please contact them, Google them, support them. They're all up and coming artists of South Africa. Support artists, buy from artists. And that's the nature of these program, these, these projects. Too. Are you happy? I'm thrilled. <laughs> to work with a bunch of artists is wonderful. So I'm thrilled. John, while I've got you, what's up at uh, Henley in 2019? What's coming up? So it's actually a very exciting year. We, we're probably going to have a record MBA intake. Uh, we're going to have a record number of, of graduates. Um, we've got a whole range of new open programs coming, which are going to be, I hope, imaginative and different. We're going to move more towards a digital space as well. And we're going to be looking for very intelligent, motivated people to come and work with us. So um, we're looking for talent um, and always looking for great talent who want to be part of not building a business school, but part of creating a dynamo to build the people that are going to build the businesses and organizations to help diversify South Africa away from these small sectors, to, to replicate Thailand and Vietnam and, and, and many emerging countries, Estonia, and you know, the people who are changing all their, the, the, the structure of their economy and have multiple sectors based on innovation, creativity uh, in those sectors, but also bringing that to um, industry generally. And I think we're going to really start finding our mojo about um, being part of that engine of reconstruction, building South Africa with a real belief in Africa. Not a fantastic one, not, not a blind one, not thinking there's not drama, but just knowing we have intelligent, capable people here. And I think people are going to come into their own and that slow improvement is going to gradually increase and we're going to do something good for our kids.